tonight we have some special local guests here to talk about Camp Win a Rainbow. So, here in the studio, we have our general manager, Alyssa De Leon, and her son, Ben, here to talk about the camp. Would you like to share why this is important to you? Hello, Kama. This is Alyssa. I'm the station manager here, and I'm here tonight to talk to you about an organization that's very near and dear to my heart. That is Camp Win a Rainbow. I was a camper at camp long ago. And um, now I am a parent in between. I was a teen staff and a counselor. Um, I'm here with my son, Ben, and we have Yatiel Owens, who is the camp director on Zoom, but maybe is going to be on the phone in a second. So I think, Tanya, will you give Yatiel a call? Sure, Alyssa, no problem. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to wave goodbye to you, Teal. Or <laughs> we can leave that open. We'll see how it goes. Ben, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Ben. I can hear a bit of an echo, too. Um, I am currently a camper at Camp Winter Rainbow. I have gone for two or three years. Three years. Three years. And it's just been an amazing experience for me. So we both love camp. Um, I was really looking forward to to uh, being a parent of a camper, and luckily I get to be a parent of two campers. And um, we're trying to get Yatiel Owens. She's on Zoom, but Tanya's getting her on the phone so that we can hear her there. <laughs> There's a lot of echoes happening. What is happening? <laughs> This is technology in the modern era. So, <laughs> Tanya, thank you for figuring this out. Tanya's amazing. She's making everything work. Oh, you know, Alyssa, I don't know what I'd be without your support. Aww. And you know what? We've got Yatil on our VIP line. Can you hear us now? Hi, I Yatil. definitely can hear you now. <laughs> awesome. So, Yatil, we were just introducing ourselves. My name's Alyssa De Leon, and I'm the station manager here at KMUD. I was a camper a long time ago, and then I was a teen staff, and then a counselor, and then my son Ben is here, and uh, this past summer would have been his fourth year as a camper, and we wanted to welcome you. You can tell us about your relationship with camp and how long it's been a part of your life. Thank you very much for um, having me and um, camp community. Um, I want to start by just acknowledging that um, currently I'm on Ohlone tribal land um, and that's super important for me to um, make sure we recognize um, and do land acknowledgement and that Camp One Rainbow is on uh, Kato Waivaki tribal land. Um, and do you know, uh, we're here in Redway, what our tribal lands are? I don't know actually. Um, I've been getting to know different areas. Um, I do know, like, up in Humboldt and stuff, but mm -hmm. I know those tri tribal lands better. Um, yeah. So I grew up in Laytonville. I'm a Mendocino girl, and um, that's how I got connected with Camp Winter Rainbow uh, 34 years ago. So I've missed two summers. Um, in those 34 years, um, and then this summer was the third summer that all of us missed. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I was the dishwasher and grew up at camp doing all the different jobs and got my social work degree and worked as a social worker but always came back to camp. And then about 10 years ago, um, became part of the succession planning and am now the second generation uh, director. Wonderful. Well, that's where I have seen you the last few years is welcoming, welcoming everybody to the land when we come for the big show, which as a parent, I get weepy, like it's not even happening. So maybe you tell this is like my, uh, cumulative weepiness. Cause I didn't get to cry with joy watching a big show this summer. Um, but I love how you welcome everybody. And then we all get to see our children arrive in the in the parade and in the beginning of the big show. So Ben, will you tell us about what you do in the big show? Um, 
just as a as a camper. Yeah. Um, well, what you've learned throughout the duration of camp, mm-hmm. all of the talents that you've gained or talents that you've already had, you can put into the big show. Yeah. So what did you do this summer? You There was no camp, but last summer, what did you do in the big show? Um, last summer, I did West African drumming and improv. Nice. And then do you want to? Yatil, can you talk about the big show? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think that, um, I mean, the, the big show's changed over the last 34 years, I have to tell you. (laughs) Um, but what Wavy says is that we don't, um, at Camp Winter Rainbow, we don't, our goal is not to make performers, even though we're a circus in performing arts, but really to work with kids to have timing, balance, and a sense of humor, um, to really talk to them about, you know, being compassionate human beings. Um, and so the big show isn't, there's like not a lot of pressure. I don't know if you feel that, um, Ben, as a camper, like if there's not a lot of pressure to perform. It's basically like, how can we make you, how can we make the star that you are shine? Um, and so we have a lot of performances all throughout the session that we are our audience members and um, performers. So we clap for each other and cheer. Um, And then, yeah, the big show is how we can draw the parents and community into sharing the experience and the spirit. So you never really know what's going to go up. Every session is different because we co-create it with our campers. Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely love it. And then I wanted to talk about... I remember this from flyers and brochures about camp that in addition to the big show, you kind of acknowledged this camp winter rainbow is really trying to uh, support people in preparing for the life show, which is everything else (laughs) aside from the Mm -hmm. big show. Um, Ben has an older brother named Jasper and Jasper is what I call a sports dude. He's like, he plays baseball. He plays basketball. He's a tall, sporty kid. And I really loved a couple summers ago, I got a call from a counselor who said they were really working with Jasper and other kids of that genre about the being a cultural influencer, that when you are an athletic kid who shines in that way, you have an opportunity to support people who who might not be good at those things or might not be seen in a school setting or in a community center setting as being, I'm doing air quotes, as valuable or as noticeable as you are as that sporty dude. And I really, um, I really value and appreciate that part of it. I know for myself as a camper, um, especially during my early teen years, I really leaned on my experience at Camp Winter Rainbow to feel good about myself as a person and my individual contribution to my community and also just feeling like it's it's awesome to be yourself and stand up for the people who, for all of us, who have, for everybody that matters. Ben, yeah. do you want to talk about what camp does for you the rest of the year? Yeah. Camp has taught me more than anything just to be happy. Like, just do your thing. I feel like the love and feeling of Camp Winter Rainbow follows me way after I leave that area. Mm. I'm so glad. And, Yatil, uh, you you guys do a lot of work as a staff and as a camp in supporting people in their life, not just in their two weeks or their month or their one week at camp. So can you talk about kind of some of that, how, how that focus comes about and what, what some of the pieces are? Um, well, actually, um, that's something that we're moving more into. That's, I mean, I, there's always, um, blessings in hard times, right? And so this time of COVID, there's been some really significant lessons and um, I would say gifts that have been given to us as a camp community because we really were very traditionally a summer program. Mm -hmm. um, And we did see some campers that are local to the Bay area during the year. And there were staff that 
you know, if campers were having a hard time with permission of the family and the, you know, the parent um, got, you know, had contact with them to support them or listen, but it hasn't ever been something that's super formal um, until now. Like yeah. right now we're in the process of creating, looking at what year round programming can we expand to. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I know. So I was a, an angsty teen camper in the mid nineties. And I would sometimes when I was like tired of my friends or mad at my parents, imagine what if I could just live at Camp Winter Rainbow (laughs) all year round. So um, I know that's not really possible, but I think what you're pointing to is that we all know anyone who's been at Camp Winter Rainbow knows that it affects your whole life, not just your summer camp experience. And you're looking at ways to, um, to expand that in in a practice, not just in a side effect of how awesome camp is. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I'm going to mention now that if we have any listeners um, who want to call in, who have either been campers or been parents of campers or been on the hog farm for a Camp Winter Rainbow show and they have any questions or things they want to say. Um, I thought we'd talk a little bit, Yatiel, about this past summer, how it was for you guys not having camp and then um, looking forward to the future. So I thought we'd start. I would wanted to share that I loved um, that you guys held on to hope for a long time that you were going to be able to do camp at Camp Winter Rainbow in some form this summer. I know I had signed my boys up and as always I'm excited to send them there and think of them there and then come for the big show to see to celebrate with everybody um and I remember getting a letter from you I think in May probably saying you guys were going to hold on as long as possible to the hope of having at least one or two sessions um at camp and I felt sad when I heard that wasn't going to happen and I felt sad for my own children and then felt sad kind of for all the families who this is a big part of their life. Ben, mm-hmm. I wanted to hear how you felt when you heard there wasn't going to be camp this summer. I, um, I felt incredibly disappointed, obviously. And more than just feeling those emotions, I thought about everything that I would miss. I would miss the teepees, I would miss the people, I would miss the feeling, I would even miss the heat. (laughs) But something I really thought about missing, this is kind of funny, the costume barn, there's a squid (laughs) hat, and I really miss that squid hat. (laughs) Um, And Yatiel, will you talk to us about, from your perspective, what it was like, uh, you know, hearing about shelter in place and then making the decisions that you guys had to make and what your summer was like as a Camp Winter Rainbow uh, director and what you guys did this past summer. Yeah. Um, so it was devastating. Mm-hmm. Totally devastating um, to have to make that decision. And really what it came down to were the um, shelter in place orders from Mendocino County, mm-hmm. um, not allowing people with, like, ha- having everyone stay within a 50-mile radius, which yeah. is super smart. Like, I totally understood 100%. We went through, uh, like, so many different iterations of what we could possibly do to keep everyone in Mendocino County and then anyone who came to camp safe. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just came down to, at the very last minute, like, we just couldn't do it. Um And then there was the refunding process, which we're very dedicated to getting people back their money if they wanted to. Um, So that was very expensive. And um, but the miraculous story that came out of it Mm -hmm. was that we canceled. We sent out that email on a Thursday or on a Friday. And then on a Monday, we got contacted by a parent here in the East Bay that said, why don't you do something on the um, East Bay Waldorf School campus? It's 90 acres. (laughs) And actually, it's three minutes away from my house. (laughs) Awesome. So by 
Wednesday we were touring it. Thursday they had a board meeting and approved it. Mm-hmm. Friday we had a board meeting and approved it. And by the following Monday, um, we were advertising and we were able to hold day camp for a hundred kids in person, fifty at a time, two three week sessions. Um, and then we also had so many protocols put into place. We were fully masked the entire time. We were outside the entire time, and we tested every week. Wow. Um, because a company named Vault mm-hmm. donated spit tests to us, about $50,000 worth. So That's amazing. So you tested the campers and the staff every week? Yep, every week. Well, I'm really, I'm really, I felt really good, even though it didn't work for us to be there, uh, to picture you all together, uh, even though it was a smaller group than usual, it sounds like, but a camp being camp in a different location it, it warmed my heart to think about that. Thank you. It was it was hard. We learned a lot, but the board is wanting us to add day camps as a permanent, so day camp and sleepaway camp as yeah. permanent thing. Nice. So yeah. what parts of uh, day camp do you think went really well, or and then what parts were surprising or you might want to change for next year? Um, the what translated really well, what was really clear, mm-hmm. is that while that the Laytonville land is very important to us and our and our community and our culture, there's also a spirit of camp that mm-hmm. can be brought. Um, all of our staff were hired within 24 hours, and they were all. I'm sorry, <laughs> they were all people who um, grew up at camp. Yeah. So we had that like. People who who did come and visit, like Wavy and Jahanara, were able to come a couple times. They were like, "This, oh my gosh, this is camp! Like, <laughs> this is camp on a rainbow!" And we didn't have like all of our equipment or anything, so yeah. there's that spirit. Yeah, that's beautiful that that was able to continue. I think um, Ben and I and Tanya are all really lucky to live in a place with a really strong sense of community year round. Um, but Camp Winter Rainbow has already always been a place like that for me where it instantly feels like home. And Mm -hmm. I know for a lot of the children involved, like their community might be more dispersed or it might be more of a commuter situation that they live in, um, where they're not as in close contact. And this year with COVID, we're all missing close contact. Um, so I'm glad that you were able to continue in some way. Um, Something that I really was interested to see how you addressed it this summer at camp, and uh, I'm sure you're looking to the future to just to to address this, uh, is when th- the death of George Floyd mobilized so many people in our nation. Um, I really thought of Camp Winter Rainbow instantly, be- be- because camp has always done a, a lot of work in taking big ideas and making them accessible to humans of all ages, starting with young children. So I'm wondering if you want to talk about uh, any, what, what camp, what the camp community was planning when that first occurred and what you're looking at going forward from this point. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, We, of course, were in so much pain. Um, and we have our, uh, a Black Lives Matter um, letter statement from our community on our website. Um, so that was something that we did. And then we had a lot of conversations and activities and um, ways to access information during day camp with the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's that. But I think really looking at it um, from a, like, what are we actively doing? Like, how are we embracing it now in 2020? Because, you know, camp started 46 years ago. Yeah. It was different then. And it's gone through a lot of different waves of, you know, what we offer and who we are and looking at ourselves. So we're just, again, at that point where we need to go back into our DNA mm-hmm. and do really look at it from an anti-racist um, perspective and look at, concretely, you know, what can we offer? How can we act? Not just be a place, but act 
Um, yeah. And you do that through circus and performing arts and our conversations and who we are and all of that. Um, so we're just starting that process now. It's, so um, when I was a camper, there was a day that was called, I think it was called game day or the game. Yeah. They, and, yeah. And, the, it, and that was, that has kind of transitioned um, over time. And I imagined this past summer, some of this might have to do with racial justice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we um, it, it transformed into All Nations Day, mm-hmm. um, and now we call it All People's Day. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, we did that at day camp because they were three three week sessions. Yeah. So even though the kids weren't sleeping with us, we got a good deal of time with mm-hmm. them. So as we look forward, um, I know Ben said this really well today, I think about Halloween. I said, what are your wishes for Halloween? And he said, well, my wish is everything would just go back to the way it was. But what was the phrase you used, Ben? My best expectation. His best expectation is that there will be a way for him to go do a little bit of trick-or-treating. So my wish for Camp Winter Rainbow is that you can... That next summer, summer 2021, everything can go back to normal. Um, but my best expectation is that there will be a summer 2021 summer camp. So can you talk about um, how how COVID and not having a full summer of summer camp has affected the business side of Camp Winter Rainbow and whatever way you want to describe that? And then uh, what the steps are to getting you guys toward summer 2021. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, we have been working really hard, um, and uh, day camp was definitely a, a good stopgap solution. It wasn't just what we wanted to do for kids. We yeah. also, you know, we needed the money yeah. um, to just keep us going mm-hmm. until now. Um, and then we launched a fundraising campaign we normally, for 40 years, have raised money for a scholarship program, but this year we were asking for unrestricted funds yeah. um, to keep us going. And our community is so generous. Um, we've been able to come back together as a team for the next couple of months to plan. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we need to get a winter, spring, <laughs> like something, some offering yeah. um, going. And so... Part, some stuff could could be online, but there's just so much online fatigue, you know? Yeah. Um, and then we're exploring, we're going to be asking parents, like, will you, would you send your kid to, you know, a in-person program this winter? Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of, that goes into it. A lot of, a lot of behind the scenes planning mm-hmm. and thinking and budgeting and trying to guess. And then also working with the counties, the state, like what, the health departments will allow and then also being safe like keeping people safe that's, that's the whole that's what all the stuff is supposed to be doing all these restrictions <laughs> yeah. for sure um so if if i i reached out to you because i saw that you guys are doing a lot of work this winter i think both because we all miss camp but then also because the uh, the the financial burden of going this past summer without a full camp session. Um, I imagine it was a big struggle. So I really wanted to hear ways that people can support uh, Mm -hmm. your organization and help move it forward into this new future that we're in. Yes. Um, Yeah, we're still, we're not out of the woods and Mm -hmm. the, um, Wavy and Jaw wrote a letter, and at the bottom they said, camp is worth fighting for. Thank you for everything. Sorry. (laughs) Um, So I truly believe that. Um, And, of course, people need to eat, too. Mm -hmm. So that's reality. (laughs) Um, So going to our website, uh, we have a donate page Mm -hmm. um, that you can read about the campaign um, and click unrestricted funds. You could send checks. You could call our office number, which is on the website, and talk to us. Um, if you have 
ideas about a you know a private fundraiser that you wanted Wavy to come do a reading at, you know over Zoom and then you have a dinner party and people I mean there's just a million ways. Um, another thing that's been going well is people um, have been asking for donations to Camp One Rainbow for their birthday, like on Facebook or. Yeah. You know, just like putting up birthday fundraisers like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, and all of that money is like, we're down to bare bones. Like none of us are in the office. They're not charging us rent. Like <clears throat> it's just like get camp through to next fall and then with a good plan. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I really appreciate you calling me. I'm uh-huh. I'm really grateful. Um, you know, I hear you tear up and I know that Camp One Rainbow is a part of your life all year round in a practical sense. Um, it hasn't always been super, a big part of my life year round, but it's a big part of my heart all the time. And it's been such a gift to have children and watch it become a big part of their experience. And mm-hmm. a, a neat thing for me, Yatil, is that uh, my 13 year old has been communicating with his camp friends who are all over, not just in Southern Humboldt where we live and hearing about how COVID is going for them and what it's like at their school or their community and hearing about the basketball hoops being taken off at his friends, uh, basketball courts in Oakland and, and his friend in San Francisco, the app that they have to use at school. And it's been such a learning experience. And also it's been really heartwarming to, um, to, to see the kids connect to each other, even without the summer camp. Um, so what I hear from you is that you guys are looking for creative ways to move forward and to sustain the practicalities while you do that. So people can go to your website, um, any ideas or outreach for other events that are maybe in-person events as well. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. And we're so grateful to be in this with our you know, large community and yeah, and just so many people. Um, and you know, we're going to offer and put our good where it does the most for as long as we possibly can. I'm so grateful to you guys for doing that work. I know, um, I would hear K mud sometimes in the kitchen at camp. (laughs) So (laughs) we've talked about, you know, we've been doing a lot of work, um, on our transmitter in Mendocino County. And I thought about your kitchen as one of the places that might get better service. Um, so I'm glad of that. And I just wanted to specify for any listeners who are interested in making a donation, because this is something I've learned about in my work as a nonprofit, is uh, when you talk about the unrestricted funds, if people make a donation and they tell you this is for scholarships, then you have to use it for scholarships. But if you're not able to make it long enough to you to offer scholarships to kids that money just sat there in an account where if people say camp winter rainbow please use this money as you see fit then you can use it for whatever purpose is necessary is that right Um, yes and our pledge um is that you know whatever happens we're gonna we're gonna any excess money that we may be given will go towards scholarships like we'll go for inclusion and equity yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Yatil. Um, ben, do you have any last thing you want to say real fast? Um, yeah. Hang on. I need to adjust my microphone because I'm short. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say thank you, Yatil, and thank you, Camp Winter Rainbow. It's yeah. been such an amazing experience. Yeah. Thank you so much. I can't wait till you're on teen staff and then adult staff. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Yatil. <laughs> um, and I hope you have a good night. Yatil, Ben, Tanya, and all the listeners. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Toodles.